Okay. Hi, everybody. On your left is Corsion, one of your co hosts. I can't even say that right. Co host. <laughs> Jesus. It is a long day for me. Seven meetings in, an hour of basketball repped in, and I'm already exhausted to do this one. I'm Josh. I'm your other co host, but um, we're very excited. I'm especially excited to talk about this. Bo Nix looks great. Caleb Williams looks like Andrew Luck 2.0. Um, Roma Dunze. You'll get those feet and bounds. Austin Booker looks like Max Crosby. Bears are rolling, man. Going mm-hmm. to the Super Bowl, 17 and 0, baby. Is that kind of feeling? Easy, easy. No, no question about it. And Broncos going 16 and 1 with me in the Super Bowl, and that's all she built. But yeah, welcome back, guys. Um, developing our top 10 list. Last week we talked about the running backs. Previous to that, we talked about the quarterbacks. Um, links will be on the YouTube channel. So check those out for sure. Um, this week, wide receivers. My favorite topic personally. Um, my list is definitely different than uh, last year's list. A lot of great receivers didn't make the list for me. Um, Puka Nakua, not on my list. Zay Flowers, not on my list. Amari Cooper is not on my list. So um, that just goes to show the amount of talent that is in this position. Of course, Sam, when you were developing your list, what what variables stood out to you? Um, I don't know. Like, I feel like just like from what I've seen now and in the past, I guess, um, you know, how good they are and then how good people are expecting them to be though, over the next like year or two as well. I think we're just kind of <clears> – <throat> Metrics that I look at, obviously, you know, stat leaders are an important thing here. Um, and I feel like of the, like, position, of, like, the three main offensive positions we've ranked so far, I feel like stats that the players had felt like they had the most to merit amongst the three positions that we saw. <clears throat> Whereas, you know, with, like, with the quarterback position, um, you know, the, like, the player that led with passing yards and touchdowns, uh, I mean, he was on the list, but he was, like, number six and seven or something, like, for both of us being Dak Prescott. And then with, like, running backs, obviously, Christian McCaffrey, he was number one with the best stats. But uh, after that, you know, we saw kind of discrepancy within the stats. But I feel like here um, it's kind of easy to, like, you look at the top performers with the stats, and it aligns pretty well with who some of the best receivers are in the NFL already. And so that kind of made it easier for me to make this list. Obviously, it's not purely the stats that I take into account, like, uh, or just like the straight up yards and touchdowns. Um, I know a catch percentage was like a, you know, a piece that played into some of my thinking. Obviously, quarterback play has some a little bit to do with the catch percentage, but um, <clears throat> you know, it's like looking at that, looking at kind of the comp- the receiving competition they have, and if they're able to outshine that, or um, if you know, it looks like they're the guy that pulls those double teams so the other guys in the receiving room can't succeed. And so some of those are also in, that, in kind of the thoughts that I had. So it's kind of an all over the place, but yeah. Yeah, for me, the yards don't mean everything. Um, some of the guys at the top didn't have the best numbers. And it's mm-hmm. probably like flabbergasting for me to have them up there. But mm-hmm. I took into account quarterback situation and also what's in the play- player's control. What abilities do they have that allow me to put them at the rank that they are. I feel like my top five can be listed in any order, mm-hmm. really. So it was very difficult for me to <clears> narrow down. So I looked at like qualities that I would personally like in a wide receiver, but also <clears throat> surplus of strength on what they could do and minimized weaknesses. Um, and there's a couple of guys that I look for in consistency to round out my top 10. Um, but for the most part, I agree with everything you said. Cider. So mm-hmm. with that, we got a number 10. <clears throat> so number 10, um, this is a pretty seasoned veteran that I put here. Um, I feel like one of the defining traits of his career has been consistency and uh, being QB proof. <clears throat> um, I don't know who, I, I don't know, you, I don't know if he's thinking one thing. Anyways, <clears throat> um, this player recently, he's had a little bit better quarterback play. And so obviously, you know, it's, it's helped out, but um, he is a player that's had many, many thousand yard seasons. Um, it's the, uh, it, he has, you know, he holds this record alongside two other receiver greats being Jerry Rice and Randy Moss, I believe, and having 
this amount of thousand yard seasons. Um, this is Mike Evans, the wide receiver from uh, Tampa Bay. And I wonder if you had the same guy here, but <clears throat> uh, with how much you're like oogling your eyes or whatever. But <clears throat> um, yeah, Mike Evans, he's just been consistent like forever. And then you look at the talent on his team as well. You know, you got Chris Godwin, who has been phenomenal for quite a while as well. Um, and so the fact that, you know, with less than optimal quarterback play outside of the past couple seasons, um, you know, both those uh, receivers have been able to produce great numbers um, and just kind of dominate and, you know, being considered a top duo, regardless of the quarterback situation, as kind of the testament to how good he's been. Um, he doesn't ever put like the greatest numbers uh, on a year to year basis in comparison to like, you know, just the total yardage stats. But the fact that he's able to consistently put up thousand yard receivers kind of was able to lead me to put him at this number 10 spot. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> the guy I had at number 10, he's had 10 consecutive 1,000 <laughs> Um, he's a sure bet to have um, 1,000 to 1,200 yards <clears throat> in the season and 8 to 10 scores. Um, my guy also plays with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He's also a boundary weapon. Um, his name is Mike Evans as well. <laughs> um, originally, when I came up with this list, I had Chris Olave because I love oh. Chris Olave's game. And he's like the standard guy that like stats like air yards for target will apply to a lot because he hasn't had the quest best quarterback play but then i thought about this and i'm like josh what are you thinking <clears throat> this guy's had 10 straight seasons of a thousand yards <laughs> receiving last season he had the ninth most yards in the league at 12 55 he had 13 touchdowns which is tied for the most amongst wide receivers his average depth of target was 15.9 which is a great for mike evans type of player and i just could not leave him off my top 10 list i think you made a solid solid bet here he is like if you're drafting him in fantasy and you get him in the fifth round, take him. Just take him because you know what you're going to get out of him. He's not going to give you worse than the wide receiver two numbers. And he's just going to give you that utmost amount of consistency. Maybe one week or two weeks, you'll get like two two catches for 32, 34 yards. But that will follow up with a game where he has like nine catches, 100, no, not even, like 212 yards and like two touchdowns. And he just like goes off. Um, and this guy's been a model consistency throughout the league. So, um, yeah, I agree with you. Mike, uh, Mike Evans deserves to be top 10 on this list. <clears throat> nice, nice. Um, He's totally reading my body language with these lists right here. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> it's kind of wild over here. Nice job. Yeah, yeah like, all the, like I was talking, of, I was, like, hyping up the stats and whatnot, and then, like, all of a sudden I see your reaction to it, and I'm like, no way. Like, what are the odds? <laughs> Imagine if we have the same exact list of players in the same order. That'd be crazy. That'd be crazy. <clears throat> okay. On to my number nine player. <clears throat> um, he's 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 on the opposite side. He's a bit younger of a player. He's uh had he's just had four years so far in the league. Uh, so he's you know a bit on the younger side. He started out a bit lower in terms of yardage. I mean that's kind of expected with you know guys in their first and second year, but. Uh, the last two seasons, he was able to put up over a thousand yards, um, and this being in an absolutely loaded offense. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> no shot. We really had the same player, don't we? <laughs> <clears throat> it's crazy. Um, let's see, he put up one thousand three hundred forty-two pass or receiving yards <laughs> last season, um, <laughs> and it was kind of his breakout season. You know, his coming out show in terms of. Uh, I think really establishing himself in this top 10 caliber of a list. Um, this is Brandon Ayuk. <laughs> you you can't, you, you're trolling, right? You're 100% trolling, right? <laughs> Bro, I came up with this list at work today and I'm like, you know, I think this is good. And then I came home and I looked up all this cast and I'm like, yeah, I think I'm okay with this list. I overthought my list <clears throat> and I changed the last player on it. And somehow we're aligned to start two for two. My number nine receiver is also Brandon Ayuk. Um, Crazy. I've been in the bug on him in fantasy. Um, it's always for me, I pick players where I think they're going to have a breakout season. And then the year after they had that breakout season, when me, it was Brandon Ayuk. I was really high on Brandon Ayuk. Mm -hmm. uh, when Jimmy Garoppolo was quarterback, when Trey Lance had a stint, and then Brock Purdy. And then it just never materialized. And starting with the second year, I was really high on this guy. 
um, because of his route <laughs> running, his powers. I knew he was a better receiver than Debo. I always knew it because mm-hmm. of his route running ability and his ability to win deep or the middle and just get separation. This guy is a freak of nature, and um, I hope the 49ers find a way to keep him because he's kind of like their only playmaker on the outside who can win with separation. If they lose him, it's going to be very, very difficult <laughs> to find a guy that can do that on the outside. Mm-hmm. I believe in pure saw, but I think it needs some seasoning. And yeah. Debo, Debo's best at that kind of like run after cash guy. I don't mm-hmm. want him running and trying to separate from guys. Mm-hmm. So um, because of this, Brandon Ayuk is super valuable. And the reason um, he's going to continue to climb up my board, he's as good as Devontae Adams in my mind. He just needs more years of consistency to prove it. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Yeah. Good thinking. <laughs> um, here, then uh, I'm assuming eventually, I mean, if we go three for three on this, I'll be pretty mind blown, um, <clears throat> but there's a chance. I don't know. Anyways, going on to my number eight guy, um, <clears throat> I'd also like to consider him pretty QB proof. Um, you know, I think he's been kind of under the radar throughout the earlier part of his career, just to do a lack of touchdowns. But um, <clears throat> he's of the let's see six seasons he's been in the league. He's had four thousand yard seasons and this with pretty average to below average QB. I mean, I guess early on he had better QB play, but it's, it was kind of uh, anyways, um, this off season, he's kind of really big contract. I'm really happy for him. Um, but this is a guy, he put up 1,364 receiving yards, DJ Moore from the Chicago bears. Okay. Um, sorry to, Break it to you, but I do not have number eight as DJ Moore. So I didn't see the um, eye, eyes jumping out of your face, you know. Yeah. I was like, yeah, oh, okay. I think to me, to me, I took a risk with this guy putting mm-hmm. at number eight, but a little bit on DJ Moore first. I think he's highly deserving of this ranking after the season he's had. Um, not to discredit Fields, but um, he did have some limitations with delivering the ball like on time. Mm-hmm. And with that said, DJ Moore still popped off with great numbers. You saw the impact he had on Justin Fields' development last season. Uh, this is an incredible player. He's not just a run after cash guy. Um, mm-hmm. He re- wins with separation. He wins with speed. He just needed a chance to get outside of Carolina and mm-hmm. prove himself. Um, he wasn't really used as the number one option in Carolina. He was kind of used as like a 1B and sometimes phased out of the offense completely. Um, I see bright seasons for him ahead with Caleb Williams at the helm. I'm really excited about his future. As a Bears fan, I love that you put him at top 10. Mm-hmm. I can't put him there because the top guys that I've seen have proven to be over and beyond for consecutive amount of seasons. And that's nothing against DJ Moore. I think that's just a situation that he needed to get into to be in the status. Um, my number eight guy probably had the worst receiving yardage um, out of anybody on my list. But it's to no fault of his own. He was dealing with a lot of injuries last season. Um, he had under 800 yards receiving last year, uh, five touchdowns. But I still believe in the talent of this player because of what he's done in previous seasons before that. He's he's almost hit 2,000 yards receiving, which is wild to see if a player of his caliber. I think he's in for a huge rebound season despite his teammate getting all the buzz like this oh, last season in his rookie season because he set the rookie record straight. My guy is Cooper Cup, Los Angeles Rams. I still think <laughs> he is a top 10 option um, on any team he plays on, but especially in this offense. I still believe in the talent of the player. To me, I baked in the discount that he didn't put up the numbers he did by ranking him lower than where I usually would have him. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I think he's I mean, definitely bound for a rebound year. Um, obviously just having time missed the last two seasons is pretty unfortunate for him, but, um, like every time he's on the field, like even with the last two seasons when he was on the field, um, I feel like, you know, he was still the focal point of the offense and he was always a threat to be accounted for, which kind of is a testament to how good he is and why it makes sense that you have him here at number eight. Uh, he just barely missed my list personally. Um, I think just the two years of injuries and then him being like 31, I think this upcoming season is kind of like like was kind of just knocked him out just barely out of the top 10. I understand like I have a couple guys here that are 
on the older side of receivers as well. And like 30 isn't quite the cutoff. It was maybe 10 years ago for wide receivers. But um, yeah, he just, he was, pro- I was contemplating putting him in this like eight, nine, 10 spot, but he just missed it for me. I think with Cooper Cup um, in particular, the reason why I'm not scared off by the age is the way he wins on his mm-hmm. routes, the way he's able to get separation. It's very methodical. It's very tactical. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think that's going to degrade with age. I think that's something that can be understood and being time in the system and just like quickness and like football IQ. I don't think those things are going to go away. The thing is, is like, can he stay healthy? But I think he's finally healthy now. Mm-hmm. He's got a, plenty of time to recover. And you're going to see what he's going to do when you mm-hmm. have a guy like Kukunakua on the opposite side of the whole mm-hmm. season with the running back weapons they have now. So mm-hmm. I'm really excited about him. Yeah. <clears throat> um, okay. My number seven guy, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, I'm just putting in. I didn't actually, like, number them. I just have them in, like, a row. So I have to, like... Have to make sure. Okay. <clears throat> but my number seven guy, um, he's another veteran wide receiver player that I got on this list. Where I... There we go. <clears throat> um, but yeah, he, he's pretty good. He uh he's recently in the past couple uh he's started out his career a little bit slower. A lot of the fans of his team kind of hated him. Um, but then all of a sudden he stepped into his role and he basically became like the best or one of the best, if not the best route runner in the league for quite a while. Um, and then he recently had a, he had a team change to uh, go to a teammate, but then the teammate left him. Uh, and so it's, it's kind of like, okay, what now for him? But like, he's still really good. Uh, he probably have a slightly down here just due to quarterback situation. But this is Devontae Adams. <laughs> now we're back at it. Now we got similar <laughs> lists over here. My never number seven guy. Um, he had over a thousand yards, eight touchdowns. Mm-hmm. He's had back to back to back seasons over a thousand yards. The previous three seasons, all over thirteen hundred yards. It is also Devontae Adams, the guy out of Fresno State. Um, I just love the way he runs his routes. I think this is the first guy I had that's kind of like QB proof if you don't count like injuries to quarterbacks throughout the season. Mm -hmm. Um, He's the one exception of an NFL receiver that can deliver elite numbers even without a strong quarterback. Um, Even though Minshew's like a journeyman and he was named a starter, Mm -hmm. I think his skills against man-to-man coverage and some of like the route running I talked about Cooper Cup, Adams can do, but he can also separate. I think the key thing with Adams' production is can they get the same running production without Josh Jacobs now? Mm-hmm. If they can, I think I think this guy can maybe vault in the top five, even mm-hmm. with the options he's had. Because think about it. Gardner Minshew, excellent thrower of the football in the air. Um, the key thing is the turnovers with him. Mm-hmm. Because he has he has peaks for like a couple weeks and then he declines. And then you're hoping. Aiden McConnell makes significant strides enough in the second season where Devontae Adams can put up 1,500 yards a season. So if that happens, I'm I'm steadily increasing him on my list despite his age again. But um, one of the best receivers in the game still yeah. to this day. I could not make this list without including Devontae Adams on it. Yeah, and we're, like, talking, like, oh, yeah, like, question marks about the quarterback situation. Like, oh, we don't know how his stats will look. But, like, it's still – we're considering him the seventh best wide receiver in the league. Like, by no means are we really, like, dissing on anybody that we're putting on these, like, top 10 receiver lists, especially with how loaded just or how many great receivers there are in the NFL. <clears throat> um, surprisingly, you know, like, we happen to have a lot of the same guys. But um, I wouldn't have been surprised had, like, seven of our top 10 being different guys but being super confident about, uh, you know, those seven differences being on our list just because of how many – great receivers there are in the NFL that you could argue their position, you know, <clears throat> but <clears throat> funny enough though, uh, right. Like right as we started, I actually switched my six and seven guy. And so it just so happened that like, I managed to get that aligned. 
three, three out of four of our picks have all been the same receiver. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Um. Okay, so my number six guy then. He has only had three years of experience in the NFL so far, but I feel like from the get-go, he made a name for himself. He was pretty dominant. Um, and then this most recent season, he absolutely exploded onto the scene um, <clears throat> and became the one of the main focal points of his offense. Um, <clears throat> No, I'm sure you can name a really cool podcast after him, too, or something. I'm not too sure. Um, <clears throat> but, um, you know, he's a guy I wish I, I was eyeing in his rookie year in a lot of my Dynasty League stuff, and I just happened to miss out on him, which is unfortunate. Uh, but this is uh, Amonra St. Brown. Put up 1,500 receiving yards last season, which I think was amongst some of the top. Here I can find it yards i think that was like yeah it was number three in the league last season he had 10 receiving touchdowns which um you know there's only so many that got double digit uh scoring opportunities and so i don't know he's really good yeah my guy he's he had the longest reception for a touchdown this last season at 75 yards um he's never had a fumble before last season um but this guy has become the focal point of the lions Really excited about his future. My number six wide receiver is also Amon Ra St. Brown. Um, this is why. <laughs> I, I swear to you guys, Corson and I do not share our list before we come on this podcast. That's why we kind of like hint at it when we explain these guys because we want to keep each other guessing. <laughs> we are completely aligned on receivers except for one guy. Um, this guy, again, I value separation like on the route running. Um, this guy has it. The one caveat to why I ranked him lower last season than I would in other lists is the deep speed and the deep route targets. We didn't really see that before the third season. <laughs> we definitely saw it um, on his targets. Um, target increase consistently from last last couple seasons, from 119 to 146 to 164. It just shows the importance he has in this <laughs> offense. And even with more time in this Ben Johnson system, this guy continues to operate well. I don't think we'll see any drop off in his numbers as you see uh, Jamar Gibbs, Jameer mm-hmm. Gibbs, um, Sam Laporta, like continue to flourish. That's going to open up consistent, reliable opportunities in a well-defined scheme. Amon Ross St. Brown deserves all the credit in the world. <clears throat> he just missed my top five, but he is steadily approaching that as well. <clears throat> Very good choice. Um... <laughs> Nothing more I can say, but okay. So going on to my number five player then. Um, I'm like 80% sure he was my number five player last year. Um, <clears throat> I don't remember if you remember who I had in my top list last year. <clears throat> but I remember uh, you're kind of dissing me for it. I mean, like you have you had him higher on your list. I just had him at five. Um, <clears throat> I think, I mean, he's kind of just also been pretty dominant. I probably should pull up these guys' stats a little bit sooner so I can, like, see what they did over the past couple of seasons. But anyways, pretty much from the get-go, uh, <clears throat> he's, he's kind of balled out. He was taken with very high draft capital, um, <clears throat> which is, I mean, like, hot, very, you know, like, top five. I don't remember where he was drafted. He was, like, top five or something. <clears throat> but anyways, you know, he puts up great numbers. He is in a receiver room that just loaded with receivers. I think like the past, like three years, I guess that's when he started his career. They've considered this receiving room, one of the best like receiver trios in the league. Um, His preseason was plagued with a lot of drops. So people thought he was going to suck a lot, but uh, turns out he didn't, (laughs) he doesn't suck. Um, This is Jamar chase. Uh, Cool guy. Um, And I think, I don't know. It's like you. Ha- I know last season you had him ranked. Uh, I think like your number one or two, if I remember correctly. I think I had him at my number five last season. And I think even like obviously I put him at five. Like it's one of the best part. You know, if you're a top five receiver, you're one of the best. Um, <clears throat> but the one thing that kept him from being one, two, three, or four is I feel like out of the top five guys that I got, he would have the most spurts of having like a. Uh, two catch game for like 30 yards or something 
and would kind of just be like, I mean, which is understandable when you see the, you know, the talent on his team. Um, <clears throat> but I feel like the other guys, I feel like I, on a more consistent basis, saw them being kind of just absolutely dominant on their team and kind of just being able to take away the game. And like, obviously Jamar Chase, we've seen him put up like the ridiculous yardage games and just absolutely steal games too. But I feel like I just, his low, lows are a lot lower than my other top five, which put him here. But again, he's the top five receiver for me. So like he still balls out. Yeah, that's fair. Um, Jamar Chase is actually not my number one receiver. <laughs> so I am objective, even if I do have favorites. This uh-huh. is my favorite receiver ever to watch. I love <laughs> this guy. He is a speedster, but he knows how to use his route. He knows how to pitch his, uh, position himself <laughs> despite his size. So even with bigger corners, you can still find a way to win. I love the talent with this player. He struggled a little bit with injuries, quarterback situation with injuries. I think he proved he was QB proof last season. Still having 1,200 yards despite increased mm-hmm. amount of targets. And without Joe Burrow, I think it proved his worth in a league amongst the NFL elites. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, great choice here to have him at five. Unfortunately, I do not have him at five mm. in my list. I have somebody else. I know, shocker. Very, very shocker here. <laughs> this guy had top five receiving numbers, um, slightly under 1,500 yards um, last season. Uh, seven touchdowns in what was considered a down year for this team, especially towards the back half of the season. Um, very consistently putting 1,400 yards up the past two seasons. I think you could chalk that up to another 1,400-yard season out of this guy. He is a focal point on this team, and despite their loaded weapons, especially with their additions they made last, last offseason. This guy is still the number one weapon that you cannot game plan for on the defense. A lot of my guys are on this list are like that. Mm-hmm. To me, it's A.J. Brown. Mm-hmm. A.J. Brown, no matter what year it is, he's, he's going to hit top five on my list pretty much every season until some of his physical abilities diminish. Mm-hmm. And I just love this guy's talent. He is a great route runner. Despite his size and his muscle, you think – the build of this guy cannot be a good route runner, but he's like DK Metcalf, except he is an elite separator mm-hmm. at the same time. He has the DSB. He just has everything. <clears throat> so I could have ranked him higher, could have ranked him top three. I, I kind of proved <clears throat> the offensive downgrade last season and the need to prove themselves this season in my list. Mm-hmm. Plus with the addition of Saquon. Although it's going to open up more efficient opportunities for AJ Brown, Defense will have to make a decision, and I think they will rather have Saquon and Jalen Hurts just run the ball repeatedly <clears> to use up more clock than have A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith destroy them for quick touchdowns. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of a pick-your-poison type of deal, mm-hmm. but he still deserves to be top five receiver. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Very good choice. I like him. Good stats. Going on to my number four. <laughs> He also had 1,400 yards receiving and seven touchdowns. And uh, it's kind of been the focal point of his offense, despite, you know, the talent they have and the addition that they made in the offseason. He's a really big Julio Jones fanboy, so I'm sure he was really happy for, like, the 11 catches Julio Jones had with him last season. Um, But this is A.J. Brown. Um, I mean, you kind of covered everything with him. (laughs) Yeah, you I used you started reading off the stats and I'm like, oh dang it, I know exactly who this is because I have his stats pulled up right in front of me because I'm looking at him <laughs> getting ready to talk about him too. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. You. Made my job easier. He's a great, <laughs> he's a great player. Another great player. Top four on my list. I don't think I've had him this high on my list before. Mm. Um going into <clears throat> His fifth season now, um, he is ready to continue his trend of having 1,000-yard seasons. Um, last season, really broke out, um, was second in the league in receiving, third in the league in touchdowns, focal point of his offense as well. I love this guy's <laughs> separation ability. I always knew he had the talent, but the offensive systems held him back. Um, the presence of the veteran receiver held him back, even though I said, He's better than Amari Cooper ever since his rookie season, and people have denied it. But I think people see the fruits of this labor. Amari Cooper, no disrespect on him, but C.D. Lamb is a better player. 
I have him ranked number four. <clears throat> Cracked the top four list for me this season after an incredible performance. To me, the reason he's not higher is because the reason the drops against Green Bay. That's it. That's the only negative thing I could say about CD Land, the drops in Green Bay. <clears throat> I think that and their poor connection with Dak Prescott was the one reason they lost. <clears throat> and if he cleans that up, he's looking at top top three receiver consecutively year after year after year. This guy is that good. I never understood why people were like so high on Justin Jefferson and saying, oh, he went later than C.D. Lamb. and He's a better player than C.D. Lamb. I don't think it's as far away as people think. I think they're both <laughs> really, really, really close to each other as far as talent <laughs> ability. And you just don't see it yet because he hasn't been used as such. But now he's been used as such. You're seeing the numbers come to Justin Jefferson-like numbers. So hopefully he gets his contract extension. I think he deserves it. Yeah. One, one, one of my favorite players to watch, too. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, he was really yeah, – he obviously, you know, he broke out last season. But then even look at his stats over the – like, just throughout his career. Literally, rookie year, he had 900 yards. And then uh, the following two seasons is 1,100 and 1,300. And so it's like <clears> – <throat> It, it feels like a very quiet, like 1100, 1300, even like a 900 yard rookie career to have, you know, where it's like, if I, and I think it was because there were so many first round like receivers and even big name second round receivers in that class that like it's, it's easy to drown it out. But like, um, I feel like in any other class that isn't as loaded with the receivers, um, <clears throat> People are people like immediately are gloating over him after his first two seasons and are just expecting great things from him. Whereas, um, obviously, he he's been good, but like people just kind of like overshadow. I think it, I think in part being on the Cowboys kind of hurts that like people being a fan of him stock. But like <clears throat> he's been balling out. I have him on my dynasty team, so I'm like really happy. Um, <clears throat> but uh, going on to my number three guy on my list. <clears throat> Last season, he was one of the receiving yard leaders. Uh, He put up, like, 1,700 receiving yards, had, like, 12 touchdowns, which was, like, amongst the top in the league last season. Um, He, uh, you know, I I think you didn't like him because he had some drops in the Packers game or something. I'm not too sure. But, um, anyways, this guy that I really like, he's C.D. Lamb. Uh, I feel like we kind of said everything we needed to about C.D. Lamb here, but... Um, I had my number three um, above the other two guys just because, like, we're seeing, like, I mean, just seeing a receiver go for 1,700 yards is absolutely ridiculous, and it's hard to put other receivers of similar calibers above him when he's doing this and they technically haven't. Um, And this is with, I think, having, like, I mean, last season his supporting cast was a bit weaker, but even, like, in years prior, I feel like they were pretty good, and he was still putting up the good stats anyways. Well, I know one guy who's put up better numbers than C.D. Lamb, and mm. he's been doing it for two straight seasons. Mm-hmm. Um, this guy is an absolute freak of nature. He is about to challenge the world's fastest man in the 100-meter dash. Mm-hmm. Speed behemoth. <clears throat> love his game. Don't love that he got stymied by the Chiefs in that playoff game when they had to have it. 13 touchdowns, tied for first in the league. Led the league in receiving, <clears throat> tied, uh, tied for second as far as receptions. This guy is absolutely uncoverable, except in the cold weather. This guy is Tyreek Hill. Love this guy. Could not leave him off my top three list. Bonafide stud. And as long as he continues getting usage at the rate he's getting used, this guy's going to remain in my top three because still, still at his age, He's 30 now. He's absolutely uncoverable. He's beating rookies out there with his speed. It's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, Tyreek. It's crazy how, like, dominant he's been. And it's, like, the fact that he, like, just looking at the start of his career, he wasn't taken as, like, a high draft pick. And so you kind of, like, I guess typecast him as being just, like, a generic speed receiver that just, like, oh, you, you know, you draft this guy to, like, with the off field problems too coming in, nobody wanted him mm-hmm. with the off field issues. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and everybody's thinking, oh, you just draft him just you know as a guy that can you know 
take the top off of a defense and force them to, you know, play safeties and play uh, cornerbacks a little bit like off press coverage, play them, play them back a little bit. Um, <clears throat> and then he comes in and literally just dominates pretty much every facet of the game. And like, he basically created, I think, in a, like an extra trend. I mean, obviously people drafted like speed receivers in the past, but I feel like he added on that like urgency of teams wanting to have their own Tyreek Hill and having their own superstar deep threat, which I think ended up leading to a lot of other uh, receivers that are like really fast to get drafted a little bit higher than already their like pedigree that had them being drafted at wherever they were going to be. Um, and it's just because of how dominant Tyreek Hill, Tyreek Hill's been throughout his career. Um, and it's crazy the fact that like the last two seasons, he put up 1700 receiving yards. Um, <clears throat> I think I, I read today, I think that um, <clears throat> apparently it was like the game plan to try to get Tyreek Hill to 2000 receiving yards last season. Um, <clears throat> like Jalen Waddle, like kind of admitted it saying like, uh, like that was kind of the plan. And so he was just kind of there as support. And so that's why he, and so it's kind of his like reasoning being like why he had a little bit of a down year last season. It was just because it seemed like they were forced feeding Tyreek. And I mean, that's why you have him so high, right? Like, yeah, because you can force feed him and he just takes over games, um, which is why he has my... another 1700 yard season. <clears throat> I think <throat> I might have to make him my number one receiver. Mm-hmm. Next year. Cause yeah. like, I get the guys I have above him. I like them better as talents. Mm-hmm. And this is slightly better because like, mm-hmm. Tyreek is not a great as great of a route runner as these guys. Mm-hmm. They have him above some of the great route runners of this league because mm-hmm. his speed is such a lethal weapon. Mm-hmm. It literally changes how you scheme a defense. You mm-hmm. defenses have to make their own schematic changes to guard against Tyreek Hill. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Imagine if he was in the kickoff in the new kickoff rule right now. I don't think the offense are going to use him that way because they rely on him so much. Mm-hmm. Have, have mercy. Mm-hmm. That's that guy is that guy's lethal. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Luckily, the Dolphins have like five guys of near equal speed that they could really put back there if they really wanted to. But yeah, but it's the quickness. It's the quickness yeah. with that. Speed. His quickness is just <laughs> as dangerous. Mm-hmm. Not a lot of people talk about it. his quick decision making going at that speed mm-hmm. is what you can't game plan for. Because <clears throat> he's just such a quick titch athlete going at 100 miles per hour. Mm-hmm. That's like that's like. You have to train against him your whole off season just to understand how his body moves. Mm-hmm. It's wild, man. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so for all those things that we mentioned earlier, Tyreek Hill is my number two guy. Um, I, yeah, I mean, like, I'm just chasing only, it at this point. Yeah, there's only so many people that uh, we could be naming off at this stage, you know. So <laughs> nothing more. I really, I mean, I was kind of just hyping up after you anyway. So, yep. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, my number two guy, um, he was my number one guy last year. I still believe in the talent for him to be a top three NFL receiver, given his quarterback situation and the room he's in right now. Despite his quarterback being injured for half a season, he still put up 1,200 yards um, at seven touchdowns and 100 receptions on increased targets year after year after year. And, it's, and, and it was better than last year's stats, surprisingly so. Um, it's Jamar <clears throat> Chase, he's my number two receiver. The reason why I have him above Tyreek Hill is because I think he's a better route runner than Tyreek Hill. But that's about it. Everything else, I think he has the D speed like Tyreek Hill has. He doesn't have quite the quickness that Tyreek has, but he makes it up with savviness and more physicality at mm-hmm. the point of attack, which is probably another second caveat that I would have him over Tyreek Hill at. The reason he's not my number one wide receiver is because the guy above him can do the very same things he can. And he's gotten better at it. So for me, <clears throat> I kept him at number two. And I thought the number one guy had a more impressive season with the same sort of QB situation that Jamar had. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Yeah. So I guess going on to our number one receiver, um, Cole Beasley. <laughs> the greatest route technician in the league. Obviously, he's better than uh, Jamar Chase in route running, and that's why we both have Did him he here. Did right? last season? I don't know. He was doing something. Um, <laughs> Do it, number one. How do you know? So, number one, um, this guy, he only played in 10 games last season, and despite that, he still put up 1,000 uh, 
receiving yards, which, you know, equates to like 107 yards a game. Uh, so it's, it's kind of crazy um, how dominant he's been. He's literally been dominant from the start of his career. Um, like he got drafted and I don't think anybody expected him to be as good as he is. He's on pace. I think like, I mean, he's only played in four years so far, but like he really is on pace to like be one of the best receivers of all time. Um, just with the crazy stats he's been pulling off so far in his career. He doesn't seem like a diva either, which I think helps his case of, I don't know, staying consistent on the team and like all of that. But last season, or like not last season, but like year 2022, he put up 1,800 receiving yards, which, uh, you know, tops the other two guys in this list in terms of yardage from this season. Um, This is Justin Jefferson. Um, Like, he really is unstoppable when he's on the field. And, like, I like even with losing Kurt Cousins, um, I think he's in a situation where the team will just kind of force feed him targets just because that's how good he is. And that's how, like, if you're the Vikings and you're not force feeding him to try to stay in games, like, you're doing it wrong. I understand you got Jordan Addison, you got – uh Aaron Jones, and they're going to be good. Like, I'm not doubting their contributions to this team up this upcoming season, but like, teams can still double Justin Jefferson. He's still going to be putting up the top tier receiving yards. Um, and like, I think just the consistency we've seen from him is just like just better than what I've seen from Jamar Chase. And that's why I, out of the two, because I think they're very close in terms of like just overall ability. I just have Justin Jefferson just that one step better, just because. We've seen the consistency a lot more from him and yada, yada, yada. I'm sure you have a lot to say. Yeah, well, actually, I, um, my number one receiver was a division rival of yours, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a rookie season, uh, rookie guy coming in. His mm-hmm. name is Xavier Worthy. I think mm-hmm. I have to have him as the number one res- wide receiver in the NFL mm-hmm. above all these guys because mm-hmm. he's just him. Um, he's Demar Chase and Tyree Kill, but better. So mm-hmm. um, I don't know why you're nodding your head. This is a bad thing if you're a Broncos fan. Mm-hmm. But, uh, my number one guy is actually Jeff- uh, Justin Jefferson as well. Um, just to put it for you into context, the reason I'm not biased in putting Jamar Chase above him is because of the consistency you mentioned. Despite playing your games and putting up similar stats in a season that was basically lost for this Vikings team um, with revolving door quarterbacks, so um, this guy is just unbelievably impressive. And plus, he uses the size well and still does a lot of the things that Jamar Chase does as far as separating at the catch, attacking the ball, winning with separation, deep speed, intermediate route run gem, beautiful, beautiful fake moves and double moves like galore. He single handedly kept this Vikings team in the game against the Bills a couple seasons back. I always remember that catch in that game, and that was like one of the most incredible moments in, in the game for me. You have to have him as your number one wide receiver, just given the consistency. Mm-hmm. It was very difficult to make this list, um, see where to rank these guys. But despite that, I th- I'd say we did a pretty good job. Like we had like five or six guys ranked in like almost the same exact spots, and uh-huh. like a couple others like one position off. And to have that is very very impressive. Like going five for ten on like the same guys, the fat mm-hmm. guys. So pat yourself on the back, goes down. <clears throat> I think receiver is one of those like we kind of know like what mm-hmm. to expect here. But this was a fun list. Mm-hmm. Um, I had I had a lot of fun figuring out that you were describing Brandon Ayuk was the same position as me, and I was like, oh, huh, should I put him higher? Like Mike Evans. Like I was, I had Crystal Lobby there because I like Crystal Lobby's game better. Mm-hmm. Mike Evans has just been doing it for so long. Got to respect it. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just it's crazy to see, like how we second guessed our choices, but still ended mm-hmm. up with the same consistency. Yeah. But also, the level of talent these guys are. I enjoy mm-hmm. talking this. Receivers mm-hmm. are always my favorite topic to talk about. Mm-hmm. I'm curious to see what our list is next season because I have a feeling things will change. Yeah, I bet you it will too. There'll be some changes, some breakouts, and whatnot. But yeah. Any preseason um, insights you wanted to share? Like, guys, you've been watching some of the games. Um, preseason from the games that I've been trying to keep track of. Um, I mean, Caleb Williams has looked great. Um, I feel like each week he just kind of 
shows us more and more how good he can potentially be. Um, <clears throat> like, he just looks great. Um, and then I think um, Quentin Johnston truthers might might have to worry a little bit. He's I think he's like playing as like wide receiver like four or five right now, um, which isn't necessarily ideal in the situation that you know. He, he was drafted in the first round last year, and uh, that's concerning. And then a guy that I'm, in, I'm more I'm interested to continue seeing is Keon Coleman. Um, I think he prototypes as a like a career that he has to grind for in terms of him being like a, a weaker separator and reliant on kind of this being like a physical like one on one kind of catcher, um, and so. We've, he's done well so far in preseason, which is great, but it'll be interesting to see how that uh, translates to the regular season. Yeah, because a lot of these pieces, like even the Caleb highlights, <laughs> I, even if it's against some first stringers and mostly second stringers, I think the rollout and the placement of the ball that he had on that long shot to Adunze and the deep ball to Tyler Scott mm-hmm. and like even the touchdown like opportunities he created through the air and on the ground, like that stuff that will translate. Um, it will just be less frequent because you're not mm-hmm. going against vanilla defenses. Mm-hmm. And yeah. the offensive line is my primary worry with the Bears. It isn't about the weapons and it isn't about Caleb. Mm-hmm. It's literally just the offensive <clears> line. <throat> I'm super static. I'm telling you, as a Bears fan, it makes a massive difference if you just have a quarterback. <clears throat> mm-hmm. If you just have a quarterback. We finally have a quarterback. <clears throat> Think about that. We've come to the Super Bowl NFC Championship game Years back, I know years back, without a quarterback, mm-hmm. and now we finally have it. Look out, just mm-hmm. look out. I'm not saying it's happening this season, uh huh. I think the flashes will be there this season, but I think <laughs> second year onward, mm-hmm. look out, we're mm-hmm. coming. Yeah. Um, and I mean, with, with the other stuff going on, like with Keon Coleman, I think he'll struggle his first eight games, mm-hmm. and I think a lot of rookies will. Mm-hmm. But like his last eight games, once he figures out the mental part of the game mm-hmm. and the scrambled drills, like where he needs to be when Josh Allen goes in like Josh Allen mode, mm-hmm. I think he's wide receiver one. It'll just take time. <clears throat> you cannot trust him in the wide receiver role right now, like wide receiver one role. I think that's still Dalton Kincaid and uh, Khalil Shakir a little mm-hmm. bit of razzle dazzle there. Mm-hmm. But Keon Coleman will eventually be there. Mm-hmm. I believe in the talent with him as well. <clears throat> yeah yeah i think my comp you're kind of going off track now but like my comp for keon coleman is like low-key kenny galladay where it's like we've seen how good kenny galladay was with the lions and so like he can do all of that but then there's also a small inkling of a chance that like he plays like giants kenny galladay i'm hopeful that he plays like lions galladay because like that was really fun to watch but yeah yeah with that, thank you guys for watching. Yeah. Model Mission is our YouTube channel, three words. Our Instagram channel is down below, right there. Nice job, Corsian. Aman.a.mission. Um, give us a follow, give us a like, comment your top 10 right now. Um, and we will see if it's different from ours. Mm-hmm. Uh, why do you think so? Um, but yeah, see you next week. We'll be talking about tight ends. And by, yeah. by that, I mean starting with Travis Kelsey. Mm-hmm. See you guys. Yeah. Peace.